Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ tells us. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. 
everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way to them, 
and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these words in the world so that they have, may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is true. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So in our Gospel reading for this morning, Jesus is praying for his disciples. And it's, it's a lovely prayer called the High Priestly Prayer. And it's all about relationship between uh, the persons of the Holy Trinity and between God and the faithful. And the word give occurs an awful lot in this passage, um, more than in any other part of the New Testament. And, and the use of the word give tells you the whole story. The Father gives Jesus authority over all flesh in order to give eternal life to all whom the Father has given to him. The Father has given Jesus work to do on behalf of those given to Jesus from the world. The rudiments of Jesus and his own uh, given ones in the Father um, and their givenness to Jesus dominate the whole prayer. And, and these given ones have been drawn into the love of the Father and of the Son and into the Father's mission in the world through Jesus. As far as prayers go, it's a little roundabout. Um, but, but nothing overly problematic until you get to that one line where Jesus says, I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that scripture might be fulfilled. Judas is named by Jesus as the one that he's lost. Judas is uh, the son of perdition, if you use the old King James. And that line always reminds me of one of my favorite Bob Dylan songs. Uh, God on our side. Um, I try to limit myself to Bob Dylan quotes because you know, I'm going overboard sometimes. Um, but this is one of my favorite songs. It's one of Dylan's earliest. It's, it's one of what he calls his finger pointing songs. So it's a protest song. And in it, he critiques the human tendency to believe that God will inevitably side with us and oppose anyone on the other side. And given all that's transpiring in the Holy Land this week, it's a good song to play on the world stage, I think. But each verse of the song uh, talks about historical events, all, all before it ends uh, with uh, talking about uh, Judas betraying Jesus. And it goes, In many a dark hour I've been thinking about this, that Jesus Christ was betrayed by a kiss. But I can't think for you, you'll have to decide whether Judas Iscariot has God on his side told that one had to be lost so that scripture could be fulfilled. That, that one had to be lost, but it was for God's purpose that he be lost. And I have a problem with this. Uh, for one, it makes me think about predestination on a Sunday morning, which really bugs me out. Um, <laughs> secondly, um, if it's all for God's purpose, why would Judas be lost in the end? 
and especially at the hands of a God who, who told us to pray for our enemies and for those who persecuted us. And finally, you know, I think there's, there's times in, in, in all of our lives where we feel as though God is very far from us and that we're the ones who are destined to be lost. There's times where we know that we've failed God and that we've failed to live up to God's, uh, to the measure of God's perfect law. And, and in those moments, we feel genuine remorse for our sins. And I want to reassure you that this remorse is okay, because uh, you can only see your sin with the help of the Holy Spirit. And it's a holy thing, and it's the work of God. And it's in those moments that we pray and ask God to forgive us, and God does. But sometimes, you know, we can't shake the accompanying feelings of guilt, the, the sense of, of shame over what we've done. And that's why the church has the right of reconciliation. That's why, um, when we're not at Easter at least, uh, priests pronounce, pronounce uh, absolution for the remission of sins uh, every Sunday. And, and when I do that up here, I'm not standing in between uh, you and God. That, that's poor theology. Um, because you don't need a priest in order to be forgiven. However, I think that sometimes we all need someone from outside of ourselves to tell us that we are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just need to hear the words, mm -hmm. and we need to be reminded that we are not the lost ones, mm -hmm. that, we, that we are and will forever remain the given ones of Jesus, that the disciples that he's praying for in that prayer this morning, because Jesus is praying for us. But what about Judas? Jesus says that Judas is lost, and, and we know that he was lost on Good Friday, but but is he lost for eternity? Think about what we know of what happened to Jesus. You know, he, he tried to give up the he tried to get the thirty pieces of silver back. He he clearly felt remorse, remorse so strong that in the end he uh, he, he died by suicide. Now, was this sin something of which there is no possibility of forgiveness? You know, and when I ask that question, I think of, of Psalm fifty one where we hear that a broken and contrite heart for God, you will not despise. And Judas' heart isn't just broken, it's like pulverized. Mm -hmm. And so, what kind of God would not forgive that heart? I, I can't think for you, you'll have to decide whether Judas Iscariot had God on his side. And that's the question that Thornton Wilder uh, addresses in a little play that he entitled Hast Thou Considered My Servant Job? It's a really tiny play. It takes three minutes to read if you want to give it a Google and also print off some copies. They're in the narthex. Um, and, and Wilder takes the story of Job and sort of flips it on its head. So instead of Satan sparring with God in order to be given control over Job for a time, in this play, Satan gives Jesus control over Satan's best follower, which is Judas. And as the curtain rises, it's 33 years later, at the end of Jesus' uh, earthly ministry, um, it's just a moment in God's eyes, um, and, and Jesus is ascending into heaven. And, and on this journey, the Savior has this conversation with Satan, who is glowing. And at the pivotal moment, Satan says, um, I have overestimated my enemy. Learn again, Prince, that if I were committed to return to the earth in my own person, not for thirty years, but for thirty hours, I would seal all men to me, and all the temptations in heaven's gift could not persuade one to betray me. For I build not on intermittent dreams and timid aspirations, but on the unshakable passions of greed and lust and self-love. At last this is made clear. Judas, Judas, all the triumphs of hell await you. Already above the eternal pavements of black marble, the banquet is laid. Listen, how many nations are stirring in new hope and in new joy? Such music has not been lifted above my lakes and my mountains since the day I placed the apple of knowledge between the teeth of Adam. And right in the midst of this gloating, thirty silver pieces are suddenly cast up in the air from, uh, from the hand of Judas. And, and they hurtle through the skies, and casting enormous shadows as they go across the stars, and, and these coins are falling forever through the, the vastness of, of space. 
And then Judas comes on stage. These black stains around his neck and the rope of suicide still hanging there. And Satan says to Jesus, What have they done to you? Or it says to Judas, uh, What have they done to you, my beloved son? What last poor revenge have they attempted upon you? Come to me. Here there is comfort. Here all this violence can be repaired. The futile spite of heaven cannot reach you here. But why do you not speak to me, my son, my treasure? And Jesus turns to Judas and says, Speak to him, my beloved son. And then Judas, with lowered eyes, softly says, Accursed be thou from eternity to eternity. And then Jesus and Judas uh, mount upward to their due place. And Satan, in the words of Wilder, remains to this day uncomprehending upon the pavement of hell. Now I know it's just a story, but, but I tend to agree with Wilder. A, a broken, contrite heart, God will not despise. And if that statement's true, it's got to be universally and absolutely true in all cases even in the case of Judas Iscariot, and, and even for you and me. And it's vitally important for that to be true. Because if even Judas Iscariot has God on his side, then, then you and I, sinful yet contrite, are, are not lost, and will never be lost. We're the given ones of God through Jesus Christ. And neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> Christians, please stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not by name, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in a conscious triumph. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Presiding Bishop, 
and Marty, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Today we pray especially for Libby, Joyce, Jane, Fred, Eli, Sue, Tracia, John, Grandpa Ralph, Wookie, Sonia, Susan, Glenn, Russell, Kyle, Lee and Joan, Peggy, Sarah, Jaeger, Carl, Jenny, Suzanne, Bob, Nancy, Randy, Justin, Ashley, Eric, Charlotte, Lisa, Tom, Frank, Andy, Derek, Sharon, Dina, Guy, Pat, Rachel, Debbie, Mary, Elsa, Becky, James, Mike, Patricia. Silence. Andrew. Sam. We pray for the Guru family. We pray for the people of India, for Christians in the Holy Land, and for the people of Palestine and Israel. That violence may cease. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. great. We thank you, Lord, for all the Peace. blessings of this life. This yeah. Sunday, we bring before your altar the accomplishments of our graduates. For Douglas Mercer, who is graduating from St. Paul's School. For Thomas Carlos, who is graduating, graduating from UC Santa Barbara. For Emma Claire Spring, who is graduating from Washington State University. For Jess Hensley, who has earned her Master's of Education, Learning, and Technology from Western Governors University. And we pray for Kim Pocket, who retired from Western Governors this week. <laughs> we will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For Dana, for Ken, for Carithia, and on the scene, my Lord. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Okay. We will their trust in you. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, for the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Share with one another God's peace. <laughs> peace, everybody. Good morning, uh, welcome, uh, welcome back to All Saints. We are uh, so glad you're here, whether you're uh, right here or um, uh, in this little, uh, at home, um, on the other end of that camera. Um, and I also just want to say uh, hi to Sean, because I know that uh, she uh, uh, knows that this thing frightens me, and, uh, and that she wants to make sure that I did it, and I did it, Sean. So uh, good luck at your competition. Um, as I stated uh, before the service began, um, the bishop has eased some of our uh, COVID protocols throughout the diocese. Um, she was a viral epidemiologist in a previous life, so she knows what she's uh, talking about. You can um, see that letter, I guess I attached it to the newsletter. Um, main takeaways are uh, get vaccinated. Um, two, if you are vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask while worshiping unless you're singing, and uh, we evaluate that. And then three, uh, don't ask anybody why they are still wearing a mask, because it is rude. Um, if you have any other questions about that issue, uh, please shoot me an email. Uh, this week we are restarting our regular communion services at the 
Springs Assisted Living uh, Community. Uh, that'll be each Wednesday at 2 p.m. Um, all are welcome uh, to that service. Uh, last week, we celebrated Mother's Day by collecting diapers and feminine hygiene products for our local food banks and uh, Samaritan House down in Kalispell. And I am happy to report that we collected 3,812 diapers, 1,264 tampons, 1,672 pads, and 5,060 baby wipes. So, thank you for your generosity. Uh, we all have bodies, poop happens, women have periods, um, and it's nice to provide these things for those inevitabilities. So, thank you for your generosity. Uh, the Vestry is meeting for its monthly meeting tomorrow at 5 p.m. over in the Memorial Hall. Uh, please know that these meetings are open to the public. Um, if you don't want to come, I can give you the Zoom link. Uh, we also have a camera in there. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns for the vestry, uh, please feel free to talk to myself or Suzanne DeVore, who is our senior ward. Um, we have name tags again, you may have noticed. Um, wearing name tags is a great form of hospitality, and especially since your rector has only seen many of you from here on up <laughs> the past year. Um, so you can uh, wear them at church uh, for social hour, and you can return them to the board or the bin underneath the board uh, before you go. And um, we've got a lot of name tags to make because we've had an influx of folks. So if you've lost yours in the shuffle of the last year, or if you'd like a name tag, just shoot Sean an email, and she will uh, get one to you post haste. Um, okay, this is too much. Um, we're having a parish field trip this week to Alpine Theater Company's performance of Godspell um, on Friday the 21st at 7 p.m. and on Sunday the 23rd at 4 p.m. Um, might be a nice outing for all of us. It's a, a musical performance put on by middle and high schoolers uh, within the Flathead Valley. Um, it's out behind the old mountain cinema and the uh, Super One parking lot, um, out, out, out in the back, I guess, near the, the loading docks. Um, should be interesting, bring your own chair. I will uh, provide pizza and uh, propane beaters if they are necessary. Um, so you can see Alpine Beater Company's uh, website for details and tickets. Um, that's all I care to uh, talk about. I'll read the newsletter. Um, we also <laughs> need a lot of um, volunteers for a lot of different things uh, going forward. So. If you are itching to uh, find a way to participate uh, in more than the liturgy on Sunday mornings, you let me know. And most importantly, uh, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs>
thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is a right, good, and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we are not worthy servants to give you humble thanks for all the goodness and loving kindness to us and to all we would make. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our arms, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Live beyond shame and live beyond fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Fight the good fight in faith. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest on you this Easter day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is Hail Thou Once Despised Jesus. <laughs>